day. My name is Mrs. Adams. I am the Grade 7 English Educator for 2022. Today we will be celebrating the various heritages of the Grade 7 learners. Each learner is expected to have done thorough research of their respective cultures. An important aspect of today's lesson is that learners embrace their culture and become aware of the values of other cultures and customs. At the end of this lesson, learners should have learned the different cultures and their customs, as well as be able to acknowledge them. Good morning, class. As promised, today we will be doing our Heritage Day presentations in response to the recent xenophobic attacks. I hope all learners are ready. First on the list is Ndombi. Ndombi, please come forth and tell us what you have prepared for this occasion. Good afternoon to my classmates and esteemed educator. My name is Ndombi and I will be telling you about my Zulu culture. The Zulu culture originated long ago. From a historical point of view, Shaga Zulu is one of the most well-known historical figures in the Zulu culture. The language that we normally use for communication is called Isizu. Maize meal is the most common food in our tribe. It is mainly consumed in the form of a food. Uputu is a brittle maize meal porridge served cold with cow's milk. It is also served hot with any stew, beans, and vegetables. Men and women have different roles according to the Zulu culture. Men and boys are responsible for hunting for food and securing the tribe from danger. While women and girls are responsible for taking care of the household and children as well as preparing all necessary meals. At the age of 21, the girl's parents should do the ritual called Umenulu, which is a Zulu woman's coming of age ceremony. It signifies a Zulu girl's transformation from childhood into adulthood and her readiness for marriage. It is a virginity reward from the girl's parents, guests, and family members pin money on the girl's head and gift her as a gesture of gratitude during the during this ceremony, girls would wear attires made up of beads. Ndombi, I have heard about polygamy in your culture. How does that okay? Oh, Zach, I was just about to touch on that. People in my culture normally partake in polygamous marriages for various reasons. The most common reason is when a married couple is unable to conceive, the man will be encouraged by his family to take another wife. Families are the ones that make the lobola decisions. The girl will be notified of the arrangement's final preparation and the day on which she will begin living with her chosen partner. We place a very high value on ancestral veneration. Through Ugupatha, we connect with our ancestors, our great forefathers. We then initiate contact with our ancestors to seek favor and guidance. Offerings and oblations are made to please the ancestors, usually in a form of slaughtering, which is the killing of any living livestock. Which... Thank you, Ndombi, for the outstanding presentation. Next on the list is Ndwilo. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am here to tell you about my Christian culture. 
The question where the first native people to meet the Dutch settlers in the mid 17th century. As the Dutch took over their farmlands, the Kwe Kwe were disposed by the whites and forced to move from their land. The name Kwezan is a blend of the Kwe Kwe and the Seng, which are the two groups that shared the similar cultures and languages, but they were not related. What did the Kwezan wear? You might ask. Generally, the Kwezan wore a bundle of cloth around the genital area, like underwear and the braided necklace for men. The women covered their breasts with a strip of cloth and wore skirt of the same fabric. Quickly were the hunter gatherers and herders, so they would eat wild animals and raise cattle for milk. Prior to giving birth, the expecting mother was taken to a hut where she remained for a period of at least seven days after giving birth. Both she and the child were seen to be vulnerable, and so certain avoidances were practiced. This is my heritage. Thank you, Pilo. Your presentation was insightful. I am hoping everyone has learned a thing or two. Rapelan, kindly come and present. Good day, mates and educators. My name is Aman Sonapu, and my presentation will be focusing on the African tradition. The African's culture is as rich and diverse as the South African landscape. It is anchored in the language that developed at the most southern point in Africa with the arrival of Jan van Riebeck from the Netherlands in 1652. The initial idea was possibly for Dutch and the European culture to seed and grow in South Africa. But it could not hold up against the strong influences of the local languages and those of the slaves who were imported to Cape Town. The result is a rich manifold language and culture with aspects borrowed, inherited and created from the Khoisan and the slaves from places like the, the Far East, Portugal, Indonesia, Madagascar, Mozambique and Angola. After Africans, the language spoken by Africans evolved as a dialect of Dutch spoken by settlers of the frontier during the 18th and 19th. The everyday meal of the Africana is characterized by an emphasis on meat, starch, and cooked vegetables. Green or fresh salads are rare. Away from the coast, Africans learned from the native peoples to make a gruel called stave pap or pretty pap. For satis, which are stewed marinated meat like shish kebab, is frequently included in a brine. Rusks are biscuits that have been over dried. They are served with coffee. Africanas dress in modern Western clothing. On holidays and special occasions, traditional clothing may be seen. Women wear long dresses and bonnets for formal folk dancing called folk spala. Male folk dancing partners wear shirts with vest and long pants. Since television was not permitted in South Africa until the 1960s, there was emphasis on participating in sports. But African children were encouraged to play organized sports starting at a young age. Thank you, fellow classmates, for your time. We have reached the end of our presentation. Boys play rugby, cricket, or athletics. Girls play netball, basketball, field hockey, and athletics. Your presentations are well researched. I am happy to see you all representing your cultures with so much pride. We talk all your needs. 
Uh, good day, fellow classmates and esteemed educator. The Zona people are a bounty speaking ethnic found in southern parts of Africa but are mostly found in Botswana. This ethnic group is native to the people of Botswana and they are currently spread to the northwest province in South Africa. The king of Barolong was known as Tau. He was a descendant of King Morolong, who was the founder of the Barolong tribe. King Tau was a warrior, king who ruled around 1660 and fought many battles for his kingdom. Barolong has ceremonies to celebrate events like birth, marriage, bride, wealth, payment, and funerals. Before a funeral is held, the family and relatives gather for about four to six days before the funeral and feast together. The food is cooked using firewood and a three-legged pot. On the day of the funeral, a brief church service to those in mourning is held. Friends and neighbors of the deceased come to pay their respect to the family. Young girls wear makavi made up of small beads worn as a skirt. This is the traditional dance attire. Young men dress teha, short trousers mostly worn to the traditional dance. Adults wear dresses such as sushueshi and shirts made from a fabric called toishi in the color blue. Bohobe is a common source of starch for many people. It is stiff porridge and can be served with different meat and soup. We have Ting and Bohobe Jalohan. Our national dish is Seishwa. This dish is mostly served at weddings, funerals, and other special ceremonies. <laughs> get settled i see you all enjoy dancing this has definitely been an interesting day with so many interesting facts i hope that after today we have all learned that all cultures are valuable and that it is important to respect one another this means that teasing and ridiculing other people's cultures and customs is not acceptable We hope that you will implement these lessons in your everyday life, in your societies and schools. Keep in mind, the same value you hold for your culture and customs is the same value and respect the next person holds for their own.